From afternoon tea in the UK to morning coffee in the US, welcome to Foodies Across the Pond with Jane Raven and Lisa Siegel. Hello, Jane! How's it going? We meet again. We meet again. For another theme tune. Hmm? Do you think we should have a theme tune? Foodies <gasps> theme tune. Oh, I like that. A little theme jingle. Yeah, oh, jingle. Sort of our mum dancing at the beginning. I like that. And Your mum's favourite mug today. Oh, look at those roosters. My mum does love roosters. I've got my very full coffee because... Yes, careful, careful, careful. Very full, very full. Anyway, sorry, we're being very self-indulgent and just talking to each other. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to another Across the Pond. Another episode, another Friday, another fabulous foodie episode. So tell us, everyone watching, who are we chatting with today? So this chat, you'll notice my hair was quite a bit longer in this chat because it was just at the tail end before we could actually escape lockdown. And, and um, so I do look a little different. You'll wonder what's going on. But this is a lovely friend of mine called Pamela Chen who lives in Cheltenham, which is in the Cotswolds area of the country, for oh. those who don't know it. It's a very beautiful area. On my bucket list of places to visit someday. Oh, it, it's lovely, lovely. And they have lots of wonderful festivals in Cheltenham. They have a jazz festival, which is amazing, and a literary festival and all sorts. Amazing. Well worth a visit. Um, but that's where she lives, and that's where I met her, but I won't go into that detail because we talk about that in the video because that's quite a funny story and which is a shocker knowing me <laughs> and uh, she she's into all things Asian food she's a demonstrator she's written a little cookery book she's all sorts and um oh god she cooked me lunch afterwards and it was just the best food the best food I've tasted I've been dreaming about it ever since but she's a lovely person to know. Great fun, a little bit loopy, a bit like us. Perfect. A perfect guest for our show. <laughs> <laughs> we we like magnets, aren't we? We just draw them in. <laughs> All these loopy people. <laughs> it makes us fun and entertaining. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think we're entertaining too. So without any further ado, because somebody's knocking on my door. <laughs> Let's start the video. Let's meet Pamela. So, so welcome. we're gonna get silly. We're gonna get silly. <laughs> welcome. Let me introduce you to Pam that we've been talking about for ages. We have been talking about, you're not aware of this, but Lisa and I have been talking about you. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> All good stuff. And I'd, I'd like to actually go into how I met Pam, first of all. Yeah. And um, because uh, it was, I don't, do you remember how yes. we met at yes. Cheltenham Food Cheltenham Festival? Cheltenham Food Festival. I was your coffee lady. You were, I've forgotten that bit. Gosh, <laughs> you were good at that. <laughs> and yes, we met over mango chutney, really. Yes, it? I just fell in love with your mango chutney, didn't I? <laughs> I'm still addicted. <laughs> yeah, um, we loved each other from the instant we met each other. It was quite funny, wasn't well, yeah, it? it was. really? I don't I think, know why you picked me. I think to do just because you're as mad as me. I remember, and I don't know if you will remember this, because I presume you were doing demonstrations yep. at uh, that particular food festival, because yes. that's what you do, because she is the queen of Asian cuisine. Mm. And uh, you were so kind. I couldn't believe how kind you were adopting me, taking oh. me under your wing, getting me caffeine, which is a big plus in my world. But also, do you remember that you went off and got Theo Randall? Yes. <laughs> do you remember that? Yes. A, yes, I've got see. Theo Randall's coming yes. to your store. Yeah, he came out and he tried all my chutneys. Yes. Yes. It was so lovely. But he didn't go anywhere else. He just came to my store. And <laughs> we did this strange sort of hug thing across <laughs> the store. And it, it was just so kind of you. And I've never really thanked you for that. But well, it was a really nice thing to do to well, somebody who's not long started in business, because I wouldn't have long started then. No, it just, no. And he just, you know, did, did he come?
come voluntarily or did you pay yeah, him? I didn't pay him. He was going to go look around. And I said, oh, do you want me to show you around some yeah. local producer? So I just took him. I suppose we should yeah. explain, just in case, would Thea Randall be known across the pond in America? I don't know. But so he's known for Italian Italian food cuisine. In and he's country. got um, a five star, I don't know if it's Michelin star, but it's a five star restaurant, the Intercontinental. Mm -hmm. I've got that right. I the top so, floor yes. of the, Intercon the Intercontinental. Okay. Not Have you been to yet? say. No, I haven't. I'd love to. Maybe we should promise ourselves. That that's oh, what we'll do. That is something else we need to promise ourselves. Yeah. That's another conversation. Hey Theo, if you're listening, <laughs> it's your two favourite ladies. <laughs> we're ready to book now that we're reopening because we're, re we're due to reopen restaurants very soon. Yeah. So to, let's get back to Asian cuisine. So mm. I would love you to explain the type of cuisine, where it comes from. And okay. where your passion for that type of cuisine yeah. comes okay. from? Well, you can tell this face. I'm from Asia. <laughs> I'm from Taiwan. So um, I grew up with just simple home cooking, you know, very humble family background. Um, but Taiwan was Japanese colony for 50 years. Okay. So we were really influenced by Japanese cookery. So Taiwanese cookery is quite similar to Chinese cookery. But it's got a much lighter, cleaner influence from Japan. And also aesthetically, it tends to be right. better as well. Not overly fussy, but just very pleasant. Okay. So that, that's, that's me. And like I said, you know, I'm very, from a very simple family. And essentially, I cook what my grandma cooked and what my mum cooked. So is it your granny that sort of started you down the passionate... No, Line they all tried to three. stop me. Really? Yeah, because well, I grew up with I grew up with you know three generational household, so quite often dinner table is between eight to twelve people. Oh wow! I know. Yeah. So and and my granddad was the one like you know I want my dinner at this time. Yeah. So my mum is just like please don't help me. I need to get on with cooking so I can get it on the table at such time. So that's, my help, that's quite European. No wonder you fit in so well. <laughs> because we like our scheduled meal times. Yeah, well, my father the old man like did. So my mum didn't really welcome my help. So I used to, and, well, okay, very, very simple um, explanation. So quite often elderly people would live with their children, but they take turns hosting the, the parents. Oh, right. So my, pa my grandparents would sometimes live with us. They would move on to my... And then they were shunted on which, when you which, had enough. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. They just... It's like prearranged. Oh, so... Right. So all the sons would um, give them a monthly allowance. And the one they are living with just provide the board and food, kind of. And the other was oh. keep, it would give them the allowance. So my, pa my grandparents would sort of move around. So whenever my grandma lives with my, one of my uncles, one particular mm -hmm. uncle... I will always say to my mum, Em, I want to go around to see grandma after school. And then, what will happen when I get there is I'll say to my grandma, Can I cook? Can I cook dinner? <laughs> then my mum will get a phone call saying, Oh, can I stay at grandma with grandma for dinner? But what was happening is I, I get to play in the kitchen. So it because was it was my grandma. It was grandma that was yeah. inspiring you. Well, she no, she just sat back and let me play. <laughs> she looked inspiring. I mean, I was, was, I was like 10. Option. Yeah, I was like 10, 11 years old. And I just say, oh, can I help? Oh, can I do this? And I just end up doing more and more. And were you taught in school? Or was oh, it no, expected no, 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 that no, no, you no. would... Because no, I no. was taught in school. I mean... No, I mean, I'm, I'm talking when I was 10, 11 years old. It's in primary school. So... I wouldn't leave food alone then. I wouldn't leave a meat cleaver at that age. <laughs> you were at the meat cleaver. I was just, I, I, I was just so interested in food. I just wanted to play with it. I was thinking about it this morning before you came. I mean, like my family are not foodies, right? And but I so you're distinctly, the trend. yeah, I distinctly remember going to wedding banquets, and I, I get really excited about going to wedding banquets. 
and it wasn't about I want to eat as much as possible in volume. It was I want to try as many things as possible. And you're still trying. I'm excited Look, about it. She's still trying. Water kefir flavored with plums. Oh, plums! Last year's plum, so I just oh. freezed it and yeah. Oh, that's lovely. That's really mellow. Yeah, and because that... I've had kefirs before and they've been quite harsh on the palate. That's lovely. Mm. And, and it's very gently fizzy. Mm. It's just yeah, it's it's natural. Yeah. So, so when did you tran transition? When did you transition from being your granny chef mm. to being a person in the cookery world? Who oh, wouldn't shut up about it? That one you meant. Choosing my words very politely. It's okay, don't have to be that polite with me. I've got thick skin. Oh, best behaviour. I've got thick skin. Um, I guess after I came to this country, it was here. then I have, I have yes. my kitchen. I'm, I'm married an, an English guy and I have my own kitchen. And also, you know, 30, 30 odd years ago in the UK, there was no. Kitchen. That was not. There was. The, it was my the takeaway food was just Ken Hong. Ken Hong. Yeah, but you know the takeaway food is just the yeah. well there's exactly. a lot of it in still those days. Yeah. So what I wanted, I had to cook for myself. Right. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I get to play. And you I inspired get other people to play as well. Well, though. that that is that is because just over the years when we have when we have visitors, mm. given choice, everybody wanted Taiwanese food. Right. Then they'd end up hanging around the kitchen, talking to me, asking questions, and then I'd tell them. And then what always happened was that one day I'd go, how can you talk and cook at the same time? I'm like, I don't know, I just do. And the second is invariably they'll go, guys, I'm watching TV show. You just make it sound so easy. I think I'm going to go try it when I get back. And it just that, just repeat yeah. it, repeat it, repeat it for... You know, nearly two decades. Wow. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, 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 and so you're quite polished thinking, by two decades. No, I just started thinking, oh, maybe I could do this, maybe I could do this. Mm. And then I guess the, the real boost was um, a friend of was fundraising to build hospital and school, a community hospital and yeah. school in Uganda. And she, oh, blimey, yeah. Okay. And, and I was like, okay, I could give you 50 quid or whatever. But. Or let's do more. Mm. So I, we we did a ticketed event. I did cookery demonstrations, and stupidly, right? You're not gonna believe this. I look at it now, thinking, how the hell did I do that? I decided I was going to demonstrate three different me menus. Three. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Each menu, five dishes. Oh my word! <gasps> it was total madness. Were they paying thousands of pounds? <laughs> No, I know, but I don't know what overcame us at the time. I know, it. and, and it was did it. it. Yeah, and it was in a huge multi-million mansion house. Wow! And they were all very discerning customers, and they all saw that was my day job. Okay, so it's not me dreaming. I can do this. Yeah, I really can do this. I think that's jumping off a cliff. My God. <laughs> Just to do a three-course meal is, is quite extraordinary to an audience when you haven't done it before. But to do 15. And did they get to eat it at the end? Of course they did. So yes. that was your so turning point. That was the turning point. Like, okay, I really can do it. I really can yeah. do it. And at that time, I was I was a school teacher. Ah, right. And I, so, was super, yes. I was super unhappy at the time. Um, and I was just like... Okay, so I can teach this. When people are asking me how to spell something, yeah, or I can spend up my or waste my life standing in a class talking to people who didn't really want to listen to me. Whereas you could teach your passion, which was food. Yeah. Hmm. So let's talk about this now then, because we we're going to cover this a little bit later. But so if I go to mm -hmm. the supermarket yep. or to a deli. And I look at the Asian shelf, mm -hmm. I've got Asian, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's almost quite overwhelming, the choice of ingredients. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. I'm, I, I, I mean, I am a bit, I love gadgets and I love ingredients. Mm -hmm. My two downfalls. But I end up buying these things off the shelf that sound mm -hmm. fantastic, but I have no idea how to use them. So as a consequence, they end up in the front of the shelf and they get gradually, gradually, gradually towards the back of yeah. the cupboard until yeah. it's binned. So what do I need in my cupboard that I will use? So soy sauce, rice, vinegar and rice wine. Yeah. If not, if not available, use sherry. Okay. A substitute. Sesame oil. Toasted sesame oil. That's that. That's it. Keep it simple. And even if you want, things. yeah. And if you want to go just a bit more, maybe keep. Do you hear that? There's thunder in the background. We are in sunny. Well, no longer England. sunny England. <laughs> We are getting four seasons in one day today, yeah, aren't we? Today, yeah. yeah. You can maybe have Chinese five spice, a little jar of it. Yeah, okay. And maybe some white pepper. Oh, yes, that's it. Because I tend to dice everything in black pepper. So white pepper is white a softer. Pepper. And especially, it, it, it's different if you get it from Asian shop. They are more fragrant. They are very different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's really simple. It's about what you do. So I've got five ingredients, ingredients now coming into my cupboard. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then you always have your ginger or garlic or onion. Yeah. Sure. Apples in the fridge. Or chili. Yeah. But I always say this. Just keep it simple. Don't chuck everything in all in one go. Okay. I was once talking to a lady. She said, oh, I love. I love. I love Asian food and I always cook it, but it always comes out tasting the same. Hmm, okay. So I said, what were you putting in it? Oh, garlic and ginger and chili and da da and da 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 da. I'm running out of Everything. Fingers. Yeah. Everything. Uh -huh. I said, okay, so next time, just do garlic. The time after, okay. just, just do, ginger. do ginger. And then the time after, two of those things together so yeah. this time you're going to do ginger and garlic you know i think and, i've yeah. been falling down number one i'm very bad at seasoning the pan <laughs> and what? And that, that might be a failing okay. but number two i think i've fallen into the trap that that lady had and i think i've been chucking mm -hmm. too much at it okay. yeah maybe just so if you do those three ingredients separately yeah and then you do combinations of two is all of a sudden you've got five six different meals okay and then after that you may put all three together I'm and the to time after that you might add chili as well and just keep it simple and don't drown everything with soy sauce now i said i was going to come back to yes, soy sauce please do please do okay some people would i'm sure would disagree but i only keep dark soy sauce okay because Dark soy sauce, if diluted, can do the job of light soy sauce. And what would you dilute it with? Water. Water. Okay. But it's easy. Because it, it, dark soy sauce is richer and the sound effect is quite rich too, isn't it? It's richer, it's got darker colour, it gives that lovely okay. sort of casserole like, look like thing. Um, appearance, but if you say you're doing a, a stew, if you use light soy sauce to get to that sort of richness, that flavour and the colour, the whole pot will be so salty you can't eat it. Yes, yeah. So I all I just keep Especially it Especially if you're reducing it, it's going to become even saltier. Exactly. So I keep it simple, I have dark soy sauce and if I want it for light purpose, for example stir fry, you just want that golden hue. Okay. I dilute it in a little dish. And are the qualities of soy sauce? Would you go for a more expensive one, thinking that it's a better quality? Yes, like anything, you get what you pay for. There are some that are just absolutely not worth eating. Oh, really? Okay. And also read the ingredients list. That's all sorts of additives in it. So you're avoiding additives? It's not just that. They put so much sugar in, they put caramel colouring in, they put... It, 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 some even put MSG in. 
you know, we need to read the ingredients. Exactly, because ingredients. when I was growing up, or in Taiwan, you know, we have soy sauce. That is just yeah. the, the beans, the soy beans, water and salt. Done. Yeah. But the ingredient list could be crazy here. And it's just, the flavor is not there. And so, yeah, you heard it here. You heard it here. Yeah. I can go on about soy, soy sauce. sauce. See what I like doing my job? I yeah. get to talk about food. We're going to talk about something else equally what? As exciting. What? What? Your cruising. My cruising. Because I was so excited about this. I mean, it's Queen Mary. Queen, Queen Mary 2. I know. Queen Mary 2, oh, no. which yeah. is like the QE2, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's the only ocean liner in the world at the moment. I'll try now to get geeky about it. We must. Can we I have some images to it? Because I know you yeah. did put some out, didn't you? Mm -hmm. When you were dead. I mean, this massive stage. It was. Pam in the middle of it. She was like shutting her stuff. It was, it was a 1,000 seat theatre. Oh! It was, the bees have gone. It was, it was really weird. It was, it was just, yeah, it's the whole lot. And, it, and how often were you having to do that? Was it daily no, or? No, 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 no. It's only on port day. On, on sea days, so the ships have port days, everybody goes off to explore wherever we got to, so nobody's on board. But on sea days, everybody's scooped up and they need to be entertained, so yeah. I'll, do my, I'll give my lectures and, and cookery demos on those days. And, and did you find that when you were having your port days, you were exploring food markets? And of course! <laughs> Oh, I just don't think it was overkill that you don't show me any more food. Oh no, 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 no. I get I get so excited because you know, I because my my expertise, I'm always doing the Asia itinerary. Right, okay. And so you're that's my familiar ish okay. ground. So even I don't speak the language I can, I, you know, I go to Thailand, I go to Vietnam, and I, I look at things and I know what they are. And did you get a taste for somewhere that you would like to return to? Did you think, oh, I really want to learn more about this place? Everywhere? Oh, because, oh, be, yeah, because, <laughs> no, 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 because port days are short. Port days are short, yeah. especially as a, as a speaker and, and um, or entertainer, they put us into this bracket called entertainer. You know, I'm working. Yeah. So I need to make sure I'm back on time. Yeah, and, so. you know, kitchen shop. Oh, kitchen I have thought about the kitchen shops. I've already <laughs> confessed I'm a gadget I, addict. I, I think, I think, I've, I think I've bought kitchen gadgets. Sometimes just simple things like Wait. a wooden spoon from just about every country. <laughs> I've got visions of you coming off the ship at the end of the cruise, clanking you up in your suitcases. Hot, hot tools, everything. How wonderful. Oh, I'd love that. I, that would be, I would be in my element. Yeah, just like go to the market and look at the, the, the ingredients in the wet market, just what normal, I think what normal people eat and use, that is, Real life, yeah, it's not in department stores. Yeah, department stores can be the world, the same the world over. Mm. But markets are just so exciting. It's like supermarkets here, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So you go to go to the market and then go to a hardware store. I remember once them um, because I love those um, Vietnamese rice paper rolls or yeah. crystal rolls. Yeah. And you know they can be a bit fiddly. Just... Yeah. Well. Yeah. So my on my. <laughs> third or fourth trip in, in, in Ho Chi Minh City, I thought, okay, I'm not going to walk the street this time. I found out about a restaurant. That's really... <laughs> oh, sorry, that's the wrong <laughs> phrase, isn't it? I still, I still have my funny English every now and again. <laughs> Stop it, you. Sorry. Come back to the Behave subject. yourself. I will. The best behaviour now. <laughs> Rather than just walking around yeah. randomly, Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you do. I decided I'm going to go to this restaurant, which is a very, so where the local goes. But yeah. it's quite a big restaurant, it seems, a lot of outdoor area and all that. So I got there and I was enjoying it, really enjoying it. And they're, they're, they're set out with, they got different stations. 
within the restaurant is all open. That I knew about that. I wanted to see them in action. Yeah. But it was set up in stations. And so it happened. I was sitting near the, the, the rice paper roll station. And I saw these things they were using. And I thought, I have to get that. I need that in my life. For the rice paper roll. So straight after that, I went to a market and I hunted down a kitchenware shop. Wow. And I bought these white, little white mesh that is used yeah. for rice paper. So wow. basically, you dip these things in water, you put a paper on it. Yeah. So the, the rice paper gets wet without being soggy. Right. Of course, it makes sense. Sorry, you don't know what I'm telling you. I'm, I'm beginning to get a bit lost. Just but cut that big old camera. <laughs> I, I, I get too big side away. But no, people will know. It's me and my ignorance. No, I'm sure it's not. Okay. But anyway, so it just I, I, I do that. I just, it, it makes me so excited. So when are you going to run out of that paper? When do you need to go back? Oh no, I've got the paper. It's the, the mesh, the, the, oh, the, the, mesh gadget, the plate plastic on. thing it sits on. So that doesn't run Well, there out. you go. That's your new post-COVID opportunity to start importing those. <laughs> and do you oh, think you'll go back onto the cruise ship? I hope so. Oh, I hope so. I'm in conversation about oh. next year's um, voyages. Because so they're see. starting to book, aren't they? Yes, I think so. I think so. I mean, the, some companies are already doing European trips and someone was telling me there are a lot of UK trips going around at the moment. Oh, really? Just going around UK. Oh. Yeah. And I, 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 yeah. But, um, yeah. That um, sounds a bit like seasickness gone mad to me, you see. Well, you heard there was some, there were flights to nowhere in Australia? No. They What's pay that? a lot of money too. They just get on a flight? Yeah, they fly around and come back. To nowhere. The people that desperate about flying. Really? Well, I can't understand that's just it. But bonkers. Yeah. The carbon footprint and all that. But anyway, yeah. Oh, well, I will watch. So, I will watch that progress because I I loved watching you on social media when you were doing your. It's. It, you know, it's the how it's been this last last year or so. Mm. That feels so remote. Yeah, that feels really remote. Yeah. Yes, and there's still that air of fear that's sort of in the back of your mind, I think, because cruise cruising did get a really bad. It, it did. Bad it hit, did. Yeah. It? So, and and yeah, and that it's also that the dis the the distance involved, the the journey that involves to even get to the ship. Because yeah. for me, I always got to join the ship in Asia. Oh my word, so hence you were flying over there. I have to fly out. The, the the shortest journey I had to fly to was to Maldives to join the ship. But quite often I fly out to Just Singapore or Hong Kong. Oh. Darn it. Okay, <laughs> I know Maldives sounds amazing, but you know it's those gorgeous little islands where you can take a little boat trip out. Yeah. That is where the gorgeous was. On a small airport island, maybe not so much. There's beach. I was really grateful to have the beach. Yeah. But it's not what you think of the blue lagoons yeah. and all not that. Not what you see in the books. No. 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 Okay. But So are you a bit less jealous now? Not really, if I'm honest. I think it all sounds like an amazing adventure. I, I'm, is... I'm jealous of the markets. I'm I'm sort of jealous. I'm not a sailor in any way, shape or form, but I'm sort of jealous of the cruise ships uh -huh. and the interesting people that you would meet oh, on gosh. there. And yeah. I really fancy that. Yeah. I quite fancy the Maldives, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, but there, there are so many aspects of it. But, and and just, just those markets, I think that's... Mm. Because I haven't travelled, I haven't travelled at all really mm -hmm. and if any covid has taught me anything is that i really should have got on and done that and yeah. i will do that mm -hmm. now because mm -hmm. i i've missed out on so much and I, i'm i'm hungry using yeah. another foodie yeah. word yeah i'm hungry to learn more about what's out there yeah in, I, yeah in i think the world particularly mm. but yeah and it just 
like I say, just seeing the most simple things. Yeah, video. Yeah, about skills and and mm -hmm. and sustaining these skills mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and keeping them going for the future for our mm -hmm. heritage. Mm -hmm. And food is a big thing. There. It is, but I think. You know what you're saying about the, the supermarket and all that, but I think the lockdown has actually brought on a bit of revival for oh, local so. producers because yeah. you know when 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 supermarket shelves were being emptied, yeah. it was the local producers, the farm shops, the that green were... grocers, they were able to deliver goods. Well, and that... I mean sometimes physically yeah. delivering to vulnerable yeah. people who couldn't come out. Well, so, let's hope that yeah. that sustains itself I hope and, so. and carries and, on yeah. you know post covid yeah. so i've been very positive in talking yeah. post covid and yeah. um, i still love... yeah sorry no 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 we're on the same page i think yeah. on this one and i think skill wise <clears throat> it's quite quite hard to say there's, there's almost like it's very split you get the mm. the ones who really can't and don't and you get the ones who won't stop doing it. Yeah. So it, yeah. There's, there's a lot of people learning to cook, want to learn to cook. But then you you also get the other end of the spectrum that no idea. I mean, I, want, I once taught cookery, um, food, food in, in secondary school. Yeah. And you have kids coming in with a bulb of garlic, took three out and chucked the rest in the bin. Really, well, my mum, my mum wouldn't use that, or you know, try to wash dishes with blue paper towel, or trying to wash up a bowl um, from the cake mix when there's really three cupcakes worth left yes. in there. Yeah. Yes, and that's interesting, isn't it? Because I was taught hmm. by somebody who was post-war. So mm. uh, of just at the end of the war, so she yeah. would have been uh, uh, she would have been in rationing times. So if we left a crumb mm. on the bowl, yeah. you know it, everything had to be scraped yeah. and, within an inch of yeah. its life. But yeah. that that's gone. That is so gone, and I find it really sad. Mm. And so I mean, so for me, it's it's about utilizing things and just doing the simple things, but do it yeah. well. Yeah. And you know, earlier you were saying it actually it's good we just mentioned that because you were saying you're bad at seasoning pans. Yeah. I don't cook with a wok. Do you not? No. It's a pot, it's a pot, it's a pot. Pot. Okay. Right? My mum hadn't used a wok for donkey's years. So we can because take this gift I, I, trip off our shoulders. Yes. I've I've stirred fry. I regularly stir fry with saucepan. What's wrong with it? Nothing wrong with you it. You heard it here. Yeah. It, if you got wok, or even got one of them clever, you know, induction thing that's specially yeah. for your wok to sit in, good for you. Enjoy it. Well, I mean, that's it a But nothing wrong with a saucepan. Excellent. As long as you've got a lid. That's what I always do. I have to have a lid because it's not all about high fat and high heat. I cook with very little oil, just right. enough to release the flavor from the garlic or the ginger or the onion. Okay. When you put other things in, it's about a bit of water in there, shut the lid, you steam it. So it's very clean okay. and it's quick. With that in mind, because I know you very kindly, when I first met you, gave me one of your little books mm -hmm. that you do. Would you be kind enough to um, give up two of your recipes. Um, one for me, the simple one for me. Lisa, you can do complicated. Lisa it does cooks a lot of Asian food, so she'll be more on it than I will, and mm -hmm. she, she will have all those things in her cupboard, I'm positive. But um, that would be amazing. And then we can do two little videos to put, to put on the end of this of one. Of course. That would be fun, we can have of some course. kind of chain recipes and I'll be the starter the starter as in beginning <laughs> I'll be the starter as in the first call <laughs> so that would be really great so what next for Pamela Chen what next a bit more teaching when we can yeah a bit more chatting and chopping as see um supper and supper club perhaps 
right here. I think here. that would be brilliant. I, can I you just, do I, that? Because I would yeah. love to come. I, <laughs> I need to do that for me. I need to feed people. Feed people I just and need interact. To feed we we chatted for about two hours before we got started, and I think it's just because we we're so hungry for it, aren't we? Oh, I keep using the word hungry. Sorry. Yeah. But can you we are. broaden your vocab to non food yes. related ones? <laughs> no, apparently not. <laughs> I, I am just food. I Cut suffer. Me in the middle and I'm just stuffed full of food. I suffer from the same syndrome. <laughs> well, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to have got here because we've been talking about this conversation for six years odd, probably. Yeah. We know each other a long time. Yeah, yeah. but we, we never have. answered it. We never sat down and had a proper old chat. And so. the first thing, of course, that she did for me when I arrived was. <laughs> Got to keep up the tradition. <laughs> Nothing changes. <laughs> anything I've missed? Anything exciting that you want to share with the world, or that I haven't brought up in our conversation? Just bring bring your special people together with food. Just sit around the dinner table and talk and talk and talk. That's lovely. That's, That's a, a nice you know, way to love, finish, isn't it? When, when I have one of those dinners with my children and three and a half hours later we're still sitting at the table, I just love that. Love that. God, I haven't done that for so long. That is, it, to me, that is how relationships are built. Mm. Just okay. have that time there and talk. So bring your special people together. With food. Amen to that. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Okay, I am so hungry watching that segment. And all oh, that wonton soup looked dreamy. I, I can know. smell it from here. I tell you, it, I can still taste it. Mm. I mean, I've never tried to make wontons. I, I said to her, absolutely, you have to do a masterclass in this because I have to know how to make these. They were the most delicious things. So what are we cooking in? Meals and delicious Asian flavors. Now that we're yep. all inspired, what are we making? Well, originally, I had planned for us to b both cook to a recipe each out of her books, but then I'm completely selfish because I spotted on your website you do an Asian burger, and I really want the recipe for it because <laughs> it sounds delicious. Clip filler. So uh, I've gone, I've been a bit naughty and I said, Can you cook that one? Because I'd love to see that one cooked. Um, and I am going to cook uh, a salad. Can you see that in there? Oh, yeah. oh that looks so good. Does it look pretty, doesn't it? I can't guarantee my will look like that. But um, let's have a carrot salad that I thought actually would work really well in the burger, but I'm not sure. I think it would work really well. I'll have to go with your guidance on that. I Very simple. Very simple. So, um, do you want me to crack on first, or do you want to start? You crack on first. So I've done a lot of the prep. Uh, it's so simple. You and there's hardly any, like she says in the video. You don't need a lot of ingredients. So, one cabbage. One cabbage. <gasps> it's cruelty to cabbages. No, um, I've, I've just halved the recipe. You would usually use all of the cabbage. Um, you tear off the leaves, you shred them into sizes of a business card, although I don't know who has business cards these days, but you shred them into to that size. The tough bit you don't get rid of. You just bash it to break down the fibres. And again, you, I actually shredded it then. I just... Oh, interesting because... Oh, no. That's interesting you say that because here, whenever we make... because. We use a lot of coleslaw over here, especially in burgers. Um, yeah. The main ingredient in coleslaw is cabbage. And it's purple or green is usually the two different colors. But we always take that core out. I've never. Yeah. yeah. Well, she, in the recipe, she says to bash it with a rolling pin, which would you would break down the, the right. toughness of it. And um, I just flattened it with the back of my knife and, and just shredded it into to match it so that's in there as well there we go i love that because it's also it's less waste 
using yeah, oven. absolutely. And actually, it's the crunchy bit is really nice. So that was that done. And then you take um, two carrots and chop them into um, matchstick pieces. Can you see that? I can. Kind of gorgeous. So um, that's a bit of palaver. I do a Korean um, carrot salad, which I really rate. And I just um, do ribbons with my potato peeler. Yeah, I do. And I that do. might be quicker and easier for people. And I think that would work. Or a box grater. Yeah. Use the larger. So the cabbage, you put it in a bowl, you sprinkle on some salt. Sounds a lot of salt, a teaspoon of salt from memory, and half a teaspoon onto your carrot. You'll see there's some green flecks in the carrot because I've actually used one of my seasoning salts. I use the tarragon because they're so delicious. And then after 10 minutes, you'll see a lot of liquid starts to come off. So you need to, in a colander, this you rinse, okay. the carrot you don't. So you've rinsed, rinsed the cabbage back into a colander, ready to go. Simple as that. So you'll put your cabbage into probably the bowl you're going to serve in, unless you like washing up. <laughs> I like the, le the least amount of dishes, the better. Yeah, so that's gone in there. We're going to add to it the carrot. And just mix it up with your fingers. That's what I do. Toss it with your fingers. I, I will let you into the secret in a minute. I'll let you see it. And then to that, I chopped up earlier, one I made earlier. To that, you add, a, well, you could, you could use shallot. Do you say shallot? You say shallot. 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 I've got some garlic that's one clove of garlic that goes in I have um I think the chili is more for cosmetic but I'm putting quite a bit of chili in because I happen to like a little bit of bite it's just a plain uh, bog standard chili I've I haven't taken the seeds out because there wasn't many in there to take out and I've left a few of the rings whole okay. so it looks looks pretty and just like for people watching in the states, that looks like a Thai chili pepper. So you could. It's not as hot as a Thai chili pepper. Okay. No, it's it's more your sort of like easy going that fits the brief. Like a healthy. Oh, no, here is a top tip that she forgot to include in the video. Mm. I've got caster sugar there, and that's just about a quarter of a teaspoon. And caster got... sugar is granulated sugar. Is that granulated? It's finer. You would use it in cakes. Oh, okay. Okay. So super, super fine sugar. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, this is a challenge, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm trying to, you know, for people that are watching. Yeah, no, absolutely. I completely oh. agree. So this is Japanese rice Ooh, vinegar. Rice. Love it. Love rice. If rice. you, I, the tip in the book is if you can't get Japanese and you have to use Chinese, use half the amount because it's more oh. pungent. Oh, okay. Good to know. Yeah, I didn't know that. I so that's pretty readily available in major grocery stores here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's about three tablespoons. I'm just winging it here. That you, I've just added to the sugar. And that's effectively your dressing. I love that. I know. I'm just going to pour that over the salad. And I haven't got any toasted sesame oil. I've just got ordinary sesame oil. Can you see That's that? That's still going to be, oh, there you go. I can, smell it. I can smell it from here. And you just put a drizzle of that in. Ooh. I will show you in a sec. Sorry, it's a bit unfair, isn't it? Because you don't know what's going on off camera. And that is effectively it. I'm just going to toss it in the dressing. And you can see you've got your chili, you've got your carrot. That would be delicious on the burger. Yeah, I think so too. That would be delicious. And you've got just little flecks of the chili showing through. Oh, that would be delicious. In fact, so easy. People can make the burger, and if they don't want to use a bun, just make that beautiful salad and set the burger on top of the salad. 
Yeah. Okay, so ready to make some Asian inspired burgers. All you need is some pork and it's gonna look like a lot of ingredients, but it literally just takes a couple of minutes to get them all together. Light a candle, put some music on, have your kids or your husband or roommate come and help you measure the ingredients out. So let me show you what we need for the Asian burger. Okay, so we're gonna need the burger. I've already chopped up a small red onion because you're gonna need about half a cup. And then here are all the other ingredients. Again, it's not, they seem overwhelming, but these all combine to make an incredibly flavorful burger. So already in here, I've put the soy sauce and the hoisin and the chili paste. You've got some salt and pepper, some panko and egg, fresh lime juice, some dark brown sugar, which adds a really nice sweetness to everything a little ginger, and you know my secret is always buy ginger like this. You don't ever, oopsie, there we go. You don't ever have to grate ginger if you don't want to, and some garlic powder. And we're gonna add all of these ingredients to the pork. All right, so super easy. I form the patties. Try and keep them about the same size. You can, these are sliders. So as I explained to Jane, I love making sliders because they're smaller, they cook faster. If you have kids, you don't have to worry about your kids finishing a whole big burger. So I like making sliders. So this recipe though, you can make full size burgers if you want to. It makes about, as you can see, one pound of pork makes about nine sliders depending on how big or small. Um, again, like I try to make them about the same size. I'm gonna stick these in the fridge because with burgers, a little trick to help them stay together when you're cooking them, whether on a grill or on your stove, is to refrigerate them, let them get nice and cold for a few minutes. I'm gonna clean up the kitchen. Then I will be back in just a few minutes and I will cook them up and assemble them. Okay, so I've cooked them four minutes on the side and turned them over on the other side. You want to space them out in your pan. That way you want to keep the heat nice and high. You can also finish them in the oven. So you can start them off and do two, two minutes aside and then put them in the oven to finish them off or just cook them the whole way through on your stove. Obviously you can also do this on your grill. And I'll show you what they look like when they're all done and put together. So now it's time to assemble. I put the burgers on the little buns, I love using the Hawaiians. This is my favorite. It's King's Hawaiian. They're sweet rolls or they're, um, they're hamburger buns. They're so good because they're a little bit sweet. So I toasted them up and then, okay, full disclosure, I did make the burgers a little bit bigger than the buns, but look how good that looks. It's really messy to pick up. Look at that. Mm. Oh my God. Messy, but so delicious. And those are Asian burgers. Hope you enjoyed. Okay, back to Jane and I in our kitchens. That looks delicious. I'm hungry now. I'm always hungry. I always finish our films hungry. I do the same thing. I do the same. It is such a good burger. I make it all the time. And well, I'm going to be making it all the time now. And what I'm gonna make it with your carrot salad. With your carrot and carrot. Yeah, I think that would go in it's a treat. I think it would because you've got the flavors and you've got the crispness of your cabbage and carrots mm. will cut through kind of the richness of the burger. It cuts through like the ketchup and the mayo. And I I love when you balance flavors and you also balance textures. Because yeah. I love them crisp on a burger. Yes. Just like soft food, soft. I mean, yeah. I mean, we'll eat soft, we'll eat plenty of soft foods when we reach a certain age. I don't think we need to start now. <laughs> Yeah, there's plenty of time for that. Yeah, it's a little crunch. So I hope everybody enjoys them. I hope it'd be really interesting to know if people do try out the recipes. Look at me in yeah. sunshine and you're I, she, I'm trying to shade. The sun keeps coming and then it's rainy and I'm half I'm half and half. I'm <laughs> oh, that was a funny laugh. Sorry about that. Recipes, drop a comment below, pop over yep. to our websites, which are also below. You can leave a comment because the recipes are all on our websites as well. Um, or pop over to our Instagram accounts and you can follow us there and leave a comment there. 
here. So lots of ways to know that you're liking the content and liking the food because you know, don't be a recipe collector, be a recipe cooker. How's that sound? That's very good. Yeah. That's oh, top marks for that one. It's my should have a poster, shouldn't we, with that on? Yeah. Well, I feel like a lot of people collect, myself included, collect recipes and then they're sitting there and do you ever actually cook them? Yeah, no. I collect recipe books as well. I've got thousands and thousands of recipe books. I have so many too. Whoa, well, that's a really good segue for next week's episode. Feeding you the lines, Mrs. Lisa, feeding them to you. So good. So next week, such a good segue, we are going to <laughs> review five of our favorite, well, as you say in the UK, cookery books, as we say yeah. in the cookbooks. And then we'll each pick a recipe to cook from one of our favorites. This is going to be a fun episode. So you all have to come back because it might be a cookbook that you've never heard of before that will get you inspired to try something new. Yeah, I agree. Let's go for it. That That's that's going to get our thinking caps going, isn't it? I'm trying to, I'm trying to find, look, I'm going into darkness now because the rain is <laughs> It's like, like the Starship Enterprise going around. <laughs> I'm just going to, oh. Uh, there's some sun coming in. A bit of vitamin D fix for you. Seriously. Vitamin D. <laughs> right. I'll try and get my vitamin D fix. Yes, definitely. Well, so we'll see you, see you next week with our cookery books. Hope yes. you enjoyed this episode. Love to Pamela if she's watching. Absolutely. All uh, links are below. And you know what we always say? Like and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.